Thank you so much. Uh, I will go back to the Secretary Austin's phone call with the Iraqi Prime Minister. In the phone call, he pointed out two Iraqi militia groups that backed by Iran, Kataib, Hezbollah, and Harakat and Nujaba, that they are responsible for the most of the attacks. How did you get that to that conclusion that these two groups are responsible for the most of the attacks? Section 702. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to get into intelligence, um, but the bottom line is, you know, what we put out speaks for itself. And do you expect the Iraqi government to put accountability to these groups, and does the United States give any support to the Iraqi Prime Minister Sudani to address these threats? Well, I'm, I'm not going to go beyond the readout that we provided, which clearly uh, highlighted the Secretary's conversation with the Prime Minister as it relates to uh, the, the inherent right to protect U.S. forces. And, and look, uh, Iraq is an important partner to the United States. Uh, we're obviously there. Uh, we have a force presence in Iraq at the invitation of the government of Iraq to help their forces as they continue to work for the lasting defeat of ISIS. Uh, and so, again, that will continue to be our focus. But um, we do very much appreciate the Iraqi security forces and the assistance that they have provided uh, when it comes to addressing uh, these threats, and we'll continue to stay in close coordination and communication with the Iraqi government. But at the end of the day, if our forces are threatened, uh, we will not hesitate to take action to ensure that they remain safe. And then my last question, do you believe that Those are Iraqi like multi-question <laughs> folks <Yeah>. today. <laughs> last question, I promise. Uh, do you believe that the Iraqi government could do that? Because since the very beginning of these attacks, you are requesting the Iraqi government to stop these attacks, but it, it hasn't happened. Uh, again, I'm not going to go beyond what we highlighted in, in our readout. Uh, you know that we've conducted strikes within Iraq when our forces were threatened. Uh, and, and look, our focus there is on the defeat ISIS mission. Uh, you have these groups that are attempting to exploit the situation uh, in, in uh, the Middle East right now to uh, work towards their broader strategic goal of expelling the United States from Iraq and Syria. Uh, but we do not want to see a return of ISIS, uh, and we'll continue to work closely with the Iraqi government and others to ensure that doesn't happen. Let me go to Joseph here. And Just on, on that similar topic, in March, I believe, General Carrillo was testifying on the Hill, and he said there had been seven, around 78 attacks on U.S. troops since, uh, I think it was January of 2021, until January of this year. That's, you know, that's two years. And then just from October 17th until today, we have somewhere around 90 attacks. You guys have previous, more or less said that these attacks are not linked to what's going on in Gaza. You've also, you also said at the top the U.S. is trying to contain, you know, this, this conflict to Gaza. Is it still the d department's assessment that what's happening in Gaza is not linked to these attacks on U.S. troops? And secondly, I mean, is it the department's assessment that deterrence is, is working when we've seen the number of attacks in, I guess, two months, more than what we had seen in two years. Yeah, well, again, our focus, as I outline those objectives, is to prevent the situation, the conflict between Israel and Hamas from broadening into a, a regional conflict. And so, no, we, we don't assess uh, that that has happened. It has been contained to Israel fighting Hamas in Gaza, uh, and that will continue to be a focus. Uh, you know, we've talked about this before, the situation in Iraq and Syria, why our forces are there, and the fact that you have Iranian proxy groups uh, who are being encouraged by Iran to, again, exploit this situation uh, to, their, to their advantage uh, in order to meet the strategic aim of expelling U.S. forces from that region, which, again, oh, by the way, are there at the invitation of the government of Iraq. Uh, and so, you know, we're going to continue to stay focused on that mission. We're going to continue to do what we need to do to protect our forces. Uh, and, and I'll just leave it at that. Just secondly, if I can follow up on the uh, task force that's being discussed, and we don't have anything to read out, but we, we reported earlier today that there's uh, the U.S. is in talk with 12 nations about this, this task force. Can you confirm that? And then also, can you elaborate at all on the Secretary's uh, conversations next week on his trip? Does he plan to ask at least Qatar and Bahrain to, to join that? Yeah, thanks, Joseph. So so right now, no. Again, I have more, fu uh, more information in the near future as it relates to our efforts to, to work multilaterally uh, in terms of the Red Sea region. Uh, and as far as the trip goes, again, we'll have more information in the future. All right, let me go back over to here. 